Hey y'all, welcome back. I'm Mama Dr. Jones, a board certified OBGYN, a mom to four, and today we're going through the top five myths about periods that I hear repeated all over the internet. The last one might surprise you a little bit. The next video in this series will be answering some fact or myth period questions that you all left in the community tab. So if you want to see that video, make sure you hit subscribe and turn on notifications so you never miss an upload. Let's jump in to the period myths. Myth number one, you can't get pregnant on your period. This is a total lie. It is true that it is less likely for you to get pregnant if you have sex during your menstrual cycle. However, it is not impossible. Depending on how long you bleed, at what point in that time you have unprotected sex, and at what point in your cycle you ovulate, there could be an overlap there. We've talked about this before, but sperm can live in the uterus and fallopian tubes for five days. That means they can be there long after the unprotected sex. And that means if you ovulate in that five days, you could get pregnant still. So never assume that you can't get pregnant if you're having sex with someone who can get you pregnant. Make sure you're using protection or taking some form of contraception if you don't want to make a baby. I have a whole video about types of contraception and options that are out there. If you want to check that out, I will link it in the description box below. Myth number two, Periods only happen once a month. This is not quite true. Your body doesn't know what day of the week it is, what month of the year it is, etc. So although you might have a period every month, depending on your cycle length, and when we say cycle, we don't just mean the time you're having your period or having menses. We mean from day one of bleeding until the next day before you have a period again. That's your whole cycle. And those can range from anywhere from like 25 to 40 days. So if you have a longer cycle, meaning 40 days from the first day of your period to the day before you start again, then you may have a whole month where you don't have a period. Say you have a period the last week of February, you may not have a period for all of March. So the important thing here is that you're keeping track of your menstrual cycle using a calendar or an app. What you wanna do is just make sure it's coming at relatively consistent times. A little bit of variation is okay, but just keep track of it by documenting the first day of bleeding. You may find that you go a little longer than 28 days between cycles. And in that case, you may very well have a month eventually where you just don't have a period. The important thing is making sure that if you have a month where you don't have a period, that very early the next month, you do have a period. And you may have a month that you have two periods. If your cycles are 25 days apart and you start on the first day of March, then you may have another period before the month of March is completely over. So it just totally depends on the length of your menstrual cycle. Saying that this is a monthly event is just a easy way to kind of keep track of it because you should be having a period about once a month, but there is some variation to that. So don't get so married to the idea of a month that you aren't tracking your cycles. The best thing you can do is just keep track, empower yourself to know how long your cycles are, and if something is not normal, let your doctor or advanced practice provider know. Myth number three, you can't or shouldn't do a certain activity because you're on your period. This one ranges from dancing, to swimming, to riding horses, to being around certain animals, to bathing, to using cold water. I have heard all of them, and the truth is, None of this matters. You are living in 2021, unless you're watching this in another year, in which case you're living in that year. And we have the ability to use menstrual products which allow you to have the freedom to do the things you feel like and want to do during your cycle. There is nothing that is specifically off limits just because you are having a menstrual cycle. There are so many period products out there. I'm actually working on a video right now about all the period products available and another one about earth-friendly period products by themselves. And so you have a lot of options. You can use whatever you want to make sure that you can do whatever you want when you're on your period. A long time ago, before we had good period products, people were told to be less active because there wasn't a way to control bleeding. But now we don't have to do that. And anything that you've heard from your Aunt Gertrude about what you can and can't do on your period is nonsense. Do what you want, do what you feel like, live your life. Your period should not be interrupting your daily life. So that brings us to myth number four, which is periods are supposed to be painful. This one drives me absolutely bonkers because I hear people say it actually both ways. Periods are supposed to hurt or periods are supposed to not have any pain associated with them at all. And it's both 
nonsense. Some people don't have cramping and that's okay. Some people have some cramping and that's okay. What's not okay is if you have pain or cramping during your cycle or any other symptom during your cycle that keeps you from living your normal day-to-day -day life and doing the activities that you want to do. So in that last one we were talking about, you should be able to do anything you want to do while you're on your period. If you can't, because your period is really heavy, your period is really painful, you have other PMS symptoms, depression symptoms, anxiety symptoms, headaches, all of these things can sometimes be associated with your menstrual cycle and you should let us know because there is something that we can do to help with those things. So should you have pain? Not necessarily. Should you have an absence of pain? Not necessarily. You should have no cramping or cramping that is mild enough that you can still do your day-to-day -day life and not keep you from living your life like you want to do that. And myth number five, this one is going to break some hearts. It broke my heart too. And it is menstrual cycles sync up with the other people you live with who have periods. And unfortunately, it's just not true. This is called the McClintock effect. And it was originally described in the literature, I think in the 70s, when this person who was researching it identified that maybe menstrual cycles were syncing up if people lived in the same household. It has been studied and studied and studied since then with no ability to actually reproduce any valid results that show that it actually happens. I understand why it gets repeated because it's kind of cool to think that maybe we do actually do that and wonder like how it happens. I am even guilty of repeating this to people in the past before I started looking into it but it doesn't look like it's true. The evidence is pretty overwhelming, unfortunately, that this doesn't happen. So if it doesn't happen, and there was only this one not very good and not reproducible study from a long time ago that said it might, why does it keep getting repeated? Aside from the fact that I was saying earlier where it just would be kind of neat if we could believe in this, it also is a matter of coincidence. If we take a bunch of people and we assume, which I know we just talked about this, everybody's cycle length isn't the same, but for demonstration purposes, we're gonna pretend everybody has a period every 28 days and they all bleed for seven days. At some point, you're going to have overlap in those cycles. And when you add in the differences in cycle length, it gets even more convoluted. You're probably going to have days where your cycles overlap no matter what, because people are cycling at different times and at different lengths and for different amounts of days and all of these things. And so you're going to see overlap. I don't know if I'm explaining that well. I feel like I'm definitely off on my explanations today, but I hope that makes sense. It is a matter of coincidence, unfortunately, and not of uterine magic. I hope you learned something today. If you're not subscribed and you want to be, hit that subscribe button. We would love to have you. I promise you will leave with things to tell your friends. If you learned something in this video, please leave a thumbs up on it. That helps it get out to more people. I know I'm biased, but I think it's good and valuable information. I will see you next Monday.